Um, Garfield Clean Energy is a collaborative between nine local governments, soon to be 10 local governments, in Garfield County, uh, Colorado. And uh, what we have learned over the last uh, five years that we've been doing this job of uh, consulting with one another and providing contracted services to our member jurisdictions is that we have uh, a model which we believe will work across all of rural uh, the United States. Um, as you can see from this map, um, solar, wind, and renewables fall on everywhere in the country. Um, and everyone can use them. However, the political will is not always in place. Garfield County is this uh, county that borders the Utah border just north of Mesa uh, County. We are both uh, demographically uh, and geographically situated between Mesa County, which is Grand Junction. It is the smallest of the urban counties in the state of Colorado, and Eagle County, which is Vail, which is the second largest of the uh, rural counties in Colorado, and we're the largest. And um, what we found four, five, six years ago is that we had a dilemma, and that was that the political will existed to provide energy services, sustainability services, you know them as, I think, on the front range, to all of our member constituents, but we didn't yet have the money. And the reason we didn't yet have the money is that we weren't collaborating, we weren't cooperating. Um, and we found that it would be best if we were to work together in order to take advantage of those <clears throat> economies of scale that exist one, one, when a group cooperates uh, rather than competes. So in my county, Garfield County, you probably know of the towns of Glenwood Springs and Rifle, uh, Rifle being essentially ground zero for the energy industry in western Colorado, and Glenwood Springs more of a tourist hub. Uh, the town of Carbondale is also in my county, as well as a string of smaller towns. What I can tell you about the political situation is that in my county are some of the most progressive and also some of the most conservative uh, city councils in all of the state of Colorado. So when we take our message to the entirety of those nine or ten groups we work with, we try to talk about things that everyone can agree on. If the question of whether fighting global climate change is a core governmental service were placed in a referendum setting before my county, I can tell you I'm pretty sure it would lose. If the question of whether providing economic development as a core governmental service was placed before the voters in my county, I'm pretty sure that it would win. And yet the results, whether they be measured in tons of CO2 emitted from Garfield County or in the amount of energy saved through programs such as efficiencies and renewables uh, and, and energy produced through renewables, um, the, if, you, if you compare those two, you see that you get almost the same result. Less energy being utilized typically means less CO2 in the environment. So we really do frame our issues in terms of economic development, and that's not just a fluff issue. Economic development means three or four things for a rural community in terms of uh, the, where the rubber hits the road, where the bottom line is, and that's what we're all small town, as, as small town policymakers uh, questioning. Number one, it means more jobs. And uh, that's not only in uh, the uh, industries of solar and providing uh, insulation in homes, but also, uh, it also means when efficiency is moved into the commercial sector, the better opportunity for a business owner to have more money left over to hire someone else because he is or she is spending less money on energy in uh, her facility. Um, it also means uh, that government is more efficient. And nobody in this room, I think, is against efficient government. We certainly believe that that is an important government goal. We had no way, as little towns, to organize around the idea of sustainability until about five years ago. And by that, I mean nobody really had the capacity to go out and hire a sustainability advisor who would talk about energy efficiency and whether we could third-party finance a, a 70, megawatt, 70 kilowatt solar array. That kind of stuff is well beyond 
what a small town can do with a typical staff. By the way, on this uh, plate of logos here, you'll see the county itself, which is extremely well positioned financially due to energy impact monies. There are six towns there, including the ones I named before. The RFTA logo you see is the Roaring Fork Transportation Authority, and we do have a transportation component to our portfolio, which is very important. And also on here is the library district. Joining us, we believe, very soon will be the community college, Colorado Mountain College. So this is a slide of, or near, the Rhone Plateau. Uh, it has to be, it was very much an object of policy interest in the last several years, which is in our county. And all of those are gas well pads at the bottom of the Rhone Plateau, uh, connected by haul roads. Um, it's not very sightly from above. It's not very sightly from below uh, when you're on the ground with it. But it is a huge economic generator in terms of jobs and uh, tax revenue for our county. It turns out that CNG, that would be compressed natural gas, is also a huge attractor in our county, but we know that not every county has CNG in order to work into their portfolio in order to attract political interest. But we do believe that compressed natural gas in the future will be um, a market that is essentially a renewable for a variety of reasons. Uh, though it is a fossil fuel, um, and it, it bevels well for our political goals with regard to uh, moving the idea of renewable energy along in an uh, energy producing county. Um, this is a slide of our uh, website, and I put that up there simply to say that you know, our goal is to make uh, uh, energy, uh, or rather uh, efficiency in renewables uh, uh, rapidly, um, a deliverable uh, in a comprehensive array of services, and Alice will go into this in some detail later. We began in uh, 2008 because the state of Colorado had determined that it was time to put some money into political organization around energy ideas, and uh, Governor Ritter uh, instituted through the Governor's Energy Office the new Energy Communities Initiative and we won, I should say, Alice and her group, Clean Energy Economy for the Region, won the largest of those grants. It was $1.6 million. And we were able to organize, I mean, you always organize around money, right? Um, we were able to organize around the distribution of uh, that money into a number of uh, projects, renewables, efficiencies, greening government, and. Um, uh, since then, it has been our goal to continue to coalesce as a group, cooperate, not compete, against one another for grant money, so that we can then, once we're successful, and we have been several times since then, collaborate in the distribution of, uh, of that money. And before I get into this slide, I would be remiss, being a graduate of this college, of this university, if I didn't give you at least one leg legal citation and uh, uh, so let me do that right now. We are an intergovernmental agreement. For those of you who are wondering what legal entity have they discovered that works, we've been through two phases, and we, as we moved into a more permanent phase, as Garfield Clean Energy Collaboration, we ruled out a number of entities that we did not think would work and decided on one that we decided would be the best for our particular situation, and I would submit to you that in Colorado it's probably the most mobile of the jurisdictional iterations, the, you know, the organizational ideas that you can use, and that is as an authority. Um, we don't call it an authority, we call it a collaborative because it's a much nicer word to, you know, greet the public with, but um, the intergovernmental agreement section of Colorado Revised Statute is CRS 29-1-203. Um, we have an organic document prepared by uh, a firm we contract with, which I can make available to you if you're interested. Uh, we ruled out other ideas such as a nonprofit corporation and a special district, which probably was immobile, it wouldn't be um, flexible enough, and probably would not have passed uh, voter uh, approval under Tabor if it had had a, uh, a tax base attached to it. The first thing we did in 2009 was establish a baseline study 
for the amount of energy we used as a county in order to have something to compare our goals against down the road. And in a moment, I'll put those goals up and you'll see that we're looking at an 11 or 12 year span that we're in the first uh, third of right now. So we found that we were using uh, $70 million as a county, and I mean all the sources, residential, commercial, and the government sectors, um, not just the government sectors. And we had some interesting um, methodology for determining this, but we're, we're pretty, we sure we're pretty reasonable about these numbers. Natural gas and propane were 24 million, and uh, the transportation fuels we were utilizing was 124 million. And as far as this bucket in the water, I, I have absolutely no idea what that's there for. <laughs> <laughs> Something about water in and water out, I don't know. But we did have a vision, and uh, the, the board I sit on has a member from each jurisdiction which sits on it, and after we make our plans, we go back and talk to our boards, and they come back. And each one of our member organizations, the six towns and the three uh, larger governments, have passed this clean energy vision. And what it says is that we'll be the most energy efficient uh, county in the country. I laugh a little bit because I recently attended a conference where, you know, Boulder and Fort Collins and some of these other groups were attending, and they are miles ahead of us, but we do intend to catch up. And we may be the most energy efficient rural county in the country. We're certainly working on being that. We were late to the table, for instance, in being able to set up a revolving loan fund. We just now have it in place. It's gone into place in the last 30 days. That's an important piece that you know Boulder and Denver and Larimer have had for some time. We're getting there. So we want to you know, have 20% energy efficiency improvement by 2020. As compared to those 09 numbers you saw a minute ago, the same with a 25% uh, petroleum reduction and a 35% component of uh, electricity from renewables. Uh, we remind our constituents that this means a more resilient energy secure economy. You know, for those of us who believe very strongly that global ch climate change exists and that the number 350 means something very important for carbon emissions, we understand that we don't have to frame the issue in that term that reframing the issue in terms of a more resilient, energy secure economy allows us to talk to everyone because this is an important goal to everyone in America. Now, here's a slide that looks a little daunting at first, but if you look at this lower black line that's moving at a, uh, <coughs> let's start with the upper yellow line that's moving at a diagonal uh, toward the upper right hand corner of the graph, that would be our business as usual cost increase of electricity over that 11 year period the black line, is that uh, increase in cost of energy if our goals that you just saw were to be realized by the year 2020. And then the yellow and purple lines is the three billion that that county will spend in energy over that period, regardless of what we do, and it's split roughly evenly between petroleum and electric and gas. This type of modeling helps us as professionals understand what it is we're trying to do. It helps us um, uh, communicate that to our constituents and to the policymakers. And the way we do this is once we put together our grant money and our contribution money into a common fund, we then go out and hire a group of policy experts, engineers, and architects who can lead us through the programming, and that's clear clean energy economy for the region, which is situated in Carbondale, Colorado, but whose services are available across uh, the state of Colorado, and in fact, across all of America. Our results to date, um, you know, we have an emissions reduction that is measurable, uh, which we have translated into CO2 here. We have an annual cost savings. We believe that will balloon year by year and get bigger in that wedge that we showed you before. This green area, we typically call the wedge, and that's the difference between where we hope to be and where we are now. And if you kind of look at us at the very beginning of that wedge right now, we are already showing some return on investment. And as we move out, uh, we believe that that ROI will be much, much greater. Uh, our participants to date are over 84 government buildings that are in the county. We have 20 new on-site solar systems and public buildings and large-scale solar firms. And uh, you can see uh, the rest of it. We're involved in 109 commercial businesses and uh, the number of homes increases every month. We did create this uh, energy authority as opposed to a special district. 
We think that that is an exportable model that every rural county should be looking at at this point in Colorado. We just wanted to pull out some of the key strategies that we've used so that it's relevant to other places in Colorado and places that may have similar demographics as, as Garfield County. Uh, one, and I'll, I'll try to be very quick, but we wanted to make this relevant to this broader audience. So why does it matter what's going on in Garfield County? We believe it's because it's a way to reach that whole red area in the map that you saw earlier, places that may not be naturally leaning towards doing some of this. Um, we have about five key strategies. One is uniting around an overall framework that puts this in an economic development framework. Uh, Greg mentioned we start out with an, with an inventory that put it in economic terms. We put it in very understandable uh, language. We should do that for the whole state. We should have a, an, a total energy bill for the state of Colorado and talk about how there's a cost to inefficient energy use. So that's one of our key strategies and continually tell that story. Uh, we've gotten great coverage, press, out of uh, this whole framework. Lots of, of media coverage. We continue to do case studies. We're, we're just repeating that story over and over and over, and it's something we could do uh, far beyond Garfield County. Another key strategy is create and sustain enduring institutions and structures. Partnerships and alliances are part of that. This effort is so important, and, and it's so beautiful to see all of you here and what the alliance is doing. In addition to that, looking at really enduring structures, uh, take for example soil conservation districts. They were key to combating uh, the uh, Dust Bowl. Uh, Garfield Clean Energy Authority is a structure. It's going to live on beyond the different individuals that are involved. And the more we can look at that role of structure and in institutions to really tackle this issue over time um, and treat it like the Dust Bowl. There were 300 soil conservation districts set up during that crisis. What about doing that for energy security or climate protection? Another key strategy is create significant funding sources. We would not be where we are today with the results we've generated without outside funding sources, and we've been extremely lucky. Uh, it started out with Renewable Energy Mitigation Program Fund that CORE manages. Um, that was a $100,000 seed grant that got us started. Uh, after that, we got a State New Energy Communities Initiative Grant, which was about $1.4 million. That was, uh, the previous administration deciding to take some severance tax money and putting it into uh, a, an initiative around the state to encourage investing in the future. After that, we went after our funding. We're part of a Boulder Denver uh, Department of Energy grant uh, that's been absolutely essential. We also got a Main Street grant. I'm just being very, very honest about all the help that we've gotten. It's been funding that other places have said, let's have the political courage to create this funding source. Uh, I should go back to the RIMP funding program. That's through uh, City of Aspen and Peking County deciding probably about 10 years ago to create a carbon tax on large buildings. And it's generated, what is it, over 13 million, 15 million to date? Uh, and, and so different areas finding ways to create those funding sources. Uh, with Garfield Clean Energy, we're starting the discussion of a dedicated funding source for the authority. But I believe statewide, we should really be looking at something like the Oregon Energy Trust. Because once these federal uh, funding sources are funds, and once the New Energy Communities Initiative grant went away, if we were able to find additional funding sources, many other places could do this kind of work. You need that initial catalyst. So I really want to emphasize that although we've had amazing you know, partnerships, collaboration, we would not have been able to do it without these different funding sources from other places. Fourth. Uh, create a culture of empowerment, engagement, knowledge, and know-how for shaping your energy future. Um, sometimes people see energy as something they can't influence in any way whatsoever, and this empowerment engagement has been a key part of our effort in our county. Uh, I'll mention a couple tools that have done that. One effort is that we've worked with schools and gotten them involved in getting students, custodians very involved in managing their energy use, and that saved over $500,000 in school buildings. This is an environment where this is the, the Energy Star ratings in 2009 of the Roaring Fork School District. You'll notice these buildings in the red, they weren't even getting Energy Star ratings, although they were brand new buildings built to be lead, uh, well, not lead, but very green. But nobody pays attention to how these buildings are operating. And people feel very disempowered when they get million dollar energy bills for a whole school district and nobody stops to think, wait, we can do something about that. And so this, this uh, element of empowerment and engagement and creating very easy access to technical assistance is a key part that would benefit many areas around the country in our state.